no, I'm just going, I'm not telling any facts here. This is just what's manifested in my mind. But I think the government shut them down. The government paid them not to make any more of them because to not let people be able to talk to the other side. Then you know somebody's going to run with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The first thing on Twitter tomorrow, conspiracy theory. <laughs> Started right here on Mysteries Explained. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, we got to start something, you know, so it might as well be that, right? <laughs> <laughs> might as well go there. We could go but other yeah, places. I, I highly other recommend places if anybody find... <laughs> What's... Yeah. Well, I highly recommend that recorder um, to anyone that can get their hands on them. Um, I know they're quite expensive. They go from anywhere from 1500 to $3,000. Uh, depending on, you know, where you get it, the, the one from China or, you know, the American-made one. It's, uh, you know, I don't know. It's it's pretty wild uh, what I catch on that thing. And uh, they'll probably have to pry it out of my hands to investigate me whenever I pass on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound very cheap, though. I know a uh, little out of our budget, huh, babe? Just a little. Just a little? A lot. Yeah, I had to sell two. I had to sell two kids to get this one. <laughs> well, I ha I actually have some, some spare kids I can sell to get that. See, there you go. Yeah, we better have, day to swap me. <laughs> we have four daughters, so you know we can we can manage to give up some since we have four of them. <laughs> to get a recorder, yeah. I'm sure that I'm sure they love you for that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be in the doghouse with our kids. It's alright. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's nothing new. <laughs> All right, so uh, Billy's asking another question. Uh, he's asking, how were things back home after the Bell Witch investigation with Haunted Blythe? Um, they were a little weird for a while, and, and still sometimes, like, just when things happen, um, I'm going to let, I don't know if he's heard the story or not. I told, told some people, um, before we even told anybody where we were going, because we would t let everybody know um, where we were going, like the Thursday before, like on a Facebook Live. Um, that Wednesday, my wife had a flat tire, um, <clears throat> but had enough air to get down to my buddy's shop. <clears throat> and I said, well, just drive it on down there, and I'll meet you there, and I'll take you to work. Well, I get down to the Firestone in my hometown, and uh, there's this guy that's standing outside, um, this st real strange guy. I didn't know him. And uh, as I'm walking up, you know, I'm just kind of like, how you doing? He said, uh, and he had this weird voice. He, he said, he said, that witch is waiting on you. And I looked at him. I said, I said, excuse me? He said, the bell witch, she's waiting on you. And I'm like, oh, well. You know, okay, that's, uh, you know, I said, that's, that's all right. I said, we keep prayed up, you know, we're, we're ready to go. We got the armor light around us. We're okay. He's like, well, that witch is going to cause some bad things when you're alive. And I was like, I'm looking, of course, my wife's inside. I'm looking through the window and she's raising her hands like, what are you doing? Get in here. I got to go to work, you know? And I was like, well, okay. I said, well, I pre, I, you know, I appreciate the conversation. I said, you have a nice day. I'll walk in and, uh, She's like, well, who was that? And I said, I don't know, but I said, I'll, I'll let you in on it when I get in the truck. So I talked to my buddy, and I asked him, I said, that guy here for anything? He's like, I don't know who that is. He's like, he's not got anything here. It's like, okay. And as we're walking back out, he's just walking around the corner of the building, just, you know, whatever. So, you know, I don't want to be, you know, a prick. So I'm like, all right, have a good day. And he just kind of looks back at me, doesn't say anything. We get in the truck, and I tell her what just happened. She's like, Nobody knows where y'all are going. I was like, yeah, I know. So it's kind of like one of those weird out-of-body experiences for me. Like I'm looking down on me and this guy talking, like almost like it's a movie. Like this guy's coming out to give me some sort of warning. And, uh, and sure enough, you know, I get I get to investigate um, during our live show. And that's when I got punched in the back of the leg. And then I get home and my wife checks my leg and I've got a bruise and scratches on the back of it. Um, and just weird things happened for a few weeks after that. It was just, you know, nothing bad, but just like eerie, just like, well, that's weird. Why did that happen? Or, you know, just things like that. So um, they're better now, but every time something happens, I think about that guy that he pops up in my mind, you know, 
just like when I got hit in the back of the leg and scratched. You know, I didn't say it out loud because we're live on TV, but I'm thinking, that son of a, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> he told me, he told me before I come in here, he told me. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I was like, I, I don't know. I don't know who that guy was. I haven't never seen him in my life, and it was just weird. You know what I'm saying? Almost like, I don't know. I, I can't explain. That's another weird situation, you know, in my life that I had. It's like nobody knew we were going there, and he's is he giving me some sort of warning, you know? Yeah, that is strange to have that happen like that. I was very strong. My wife, I mean, her the look on her face was just like, and she was worried to death at night. Um, I know she, when I finally got my phone back on, the, like all the text messages started coming in through. You okay? You okay? You okay? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I said, I'm fine. I'm fine. And, uh, but, but yeah, just the experience he had there and the things, you know, that uh, Pepper and Batty afterwards, he did kind of a wrap up on that on Twitter and I think maybe Instagram. Um, it was, uh, it was kind of weird the stuff that they found, like the shadow figures and the thing that showed up behind us in that mirror, and uh, um, the pulling of my jacket when I was up there right before I got hit in the back of the leg. So there was a lot of things that that was not quite right in the place. Um, we got Stan Flags. He wants to know: uh, Did you get a lot of evidence when you investigated the Poly Jail in Union Springs, Alabama? Oh, Polly Jail. Um, we, you know, we got quite a bit, which that's been, I don't know, that's been a couple of years ago or better. Um, but yeah, we, we did have some very cool evidence there. I remember, I totally remember disembodied voices there. Um, I think that jail was where we set up um, another version of a clear, uh, almost like a devil's toy box. And we had the laser grid going, and we had disembodied voices up there. We had things walking through the lasers. Um, it was a very strength. For it to be a little small jail, um, it, it was definitely very eerie. It just had a weird feeling there. It, it didn't feel just like another, you know, creepy place. It just had this very heavy vibe to it. That's cool. I, like, wish we could travel and do this. That would be so fun. <laughs> One day. One it's day. De- it's, it's, de- it's, definitely, uh, it's definitely the best job I've ever had in the world, I'll put it that way, because I get to do something that I'm interested in. Um, they say when you're, you know, I mean, it's work. Don't get me wrong. You know, there's a lot of no sleeping, and you're on the go. You're on your feet for, you know, 16, 18 hours a day. But, uh, I mean, there's no other job that you're like, all right, well, I want to go back and get a few hours of sleep, but I'm ready to get back at this tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Very few people can say that. And like I said before, you know, been very blessed to, to be able to do what, you know, what I used to do as a hobby, as a, as a living now. Yeah, it, it's also one of the only fields that, you know, you do get hit or punched or whatever. And before you think about it, you're like, can you do that again? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, wait, no, I think never people, mind. Like, crazy. <laughs> yeah. I think that's where the whole crazy part comes in. People's like, you want them to do it again? It's like, yeah, we want to catch it on camera this time. Yeah. <laughs> but the camera's never at the right point at the right time. <laughs> no, and see, the other side knows this. That's the reason why they're playing all the time. That's the reason why we try to get Brandon the camera. I think he's the only paranormal investigator I know that can confuse the spirits. Um, he's so just random how he carries things and does stuff. Like if you ever go over his evidence, you're either watching somebody's butt or the ceiling or something because he's too intrigued about looking somewhere else. But you know, he's caught, he's caught two pretty good pieces of evidence, just confusing the spirits. <laughs> Cause he'll, he'll ram that camera around just crazy behind his back or something. And, and they can't get away from him. Well, maybe that's what you need to do then. <laughs> just not exactly. really focus on anything in particular. <laughs> it, it, just, just the camera's just rolling just randomly out in the air somewhere. Just keep it going everywhere from where you're looking. Yeah, because I know it seems, I mean, we've caught, you know, some stuff on video, but it's so hard to actually, you know, get that video. We caught one thing, I think, that we literally 
spent like three to four hours trying to debunk because we were like, okay, this is true, too good to be true. We're like, it has to be something else. And we were trying and trying and trying to debunk it. And in the end, it was actual evidence. And I think that was like one of the only visual evidence we ever caught. And that was an actual shadow behind me on our DVR cam. But usually yeah, our DVR that... cameras are not set up to where we catch anything. It's always off camera. Yeah, that, and that seems to be, that's the, that's what gets you so frustrated sometimes is because you set up all this stuff. He's like, we've got this place covered by four knots, you know? And then the one spot that you don't have, that's where something happens. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's just, it's really strange how that works because even as many times as we've been out, you know, and, and especially with TV shows, I mean, we, we hunt a lot of places and these events and things. And probably, I'd say we only have maybe six or seven things we've actually caught on video. Now we've caught a lot of, you know, like still photography um, or EVPs, that kind of thing. Right. But to get it on video, I mean, that's like one of those holy grail moments for us, you know, because you, you don't get it all the time. I mean, a lot of people, there's a lot of evidence out here that people, you know, say that's evidence that's really not, you know, but, you know, for us, we, we try to, I don't know. I guess tear it apart so much that when it comes down to those, you know, five to seven things that we've actually got, I mean, we've all looked at it for hours on end saying, nah, that can't be, that can't be. Go back, try to recreate it, you know, if we're still there. And, you know, like I said, it's very rare to come across anything on video. Yeah. It's like they know where the cameras are and they avoid them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, they're, nope. they're, they're way smarter than most people give give it credit for. Yeah. And, and I like what you just said, because I don't think a lot of people uh, realize how much behind the scene work goes in to evidence review. No, they don't have, they don't have any idea. And, you know, and I, you just making that comment about hours and hours, you know, going over that. That's how Will and I were when we caught that shadow behind me. We were like, okay, that has to be a team member. And I right. think we spent, what, like four, six hours going over a five-minute piece of video. Five minutes? It, the, the clip was only like freaking three seconds long. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we're trying to place all of our team members on camera, you know, you know, where were they and what were they doing? I mean, I don't think people realize how much work goes into stuff like that when you're doing that kind of evidence review. Well, I think they, they think it's just like, um, you know, just going out there and being stylish and, you know, having your equipment packed up and all this kind of stuff, being able to break out all these gadgets, all this kind of stuff. But, I mean, just like on our show, I mean, sometimes between the cameramen, um, which we usually have two two to four cameramen, depending, you know, if we're split up, like doing haunted towns or, or whatever, on top of our DVR system, on top of our handhelds, I mean, you're talking – we're shooting a lot of hours of investigating. I mean, you only see 42 to 46 minutes on TV, but you're talking like days. So, I mean, you take, I don't know, say 10, 10 to 14 cameras sometimes with 10 to 12 hours of video on them. That takes a long time to go over. Oh, yeah. yeah. You spend more time so, going over the video than you did actually investigating. Exactly, exactly, and a lot of beating your head on the table, being like, if I have to watch this ball for one more hour and nothing happens, I'm <laughs> going to literally shoot myself in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we know that feeling. <laughs> There's been times I, I can I can I can actually say this. I'm just sitting here with you know in the dark with my screen in front of my headphones on and being like, for the love of God. Well, it just, I mean, I don't even care if the wind just blows it just a second, just just to get me a little riled up, but <laughs> nothing. 16 hours of nothing. Yeah, we're the only ones that go over the visual. Um, all of our team members, they go over their own EVPs, but we do the DVR, which is why we do tend to keep someone in front of it, though, to write down things to kind of give right. us key points of what to look at. But, yeah, that gets old just staring at things <laughs> yeah 
and even that, you know, even when you're sitting there, you know, and you have a person writing things down, I mean, depending on how many 